Hello everyone at the 2018 OTF Summit. The conference is here not only in Taiwan for the first time, but also in Asia for the first time. This confirms that while our efforts are making Taiwan more open, transparent and free, those efforts have also had a positive spillover effect on the surrounding areas and in the international community. First of all, I want to share some good news with you. After the World Economic Forum listed Taiwan as one of the four global super innovators on October 17th, Japan's Waseda University also released the annual international digital government evaluations on October 27th. Taiwan is ranked ninth. And not only have our overall performance improved, but we have also tied for the first place globally in the digital government overall strategy and rank fourth in the open government indicator. Second, in July this year, all six municipalities in Taiwan signed the Open Data Charter and promised to continue to implement the six principles of openness, which also echoes the Open by Default guideline in the Government Digital Service Standard Beta issued by the National Development Council in October this year. Third, at the beginning of this month, the Tainan Municipal Government set up an interdepartmental open government participation officer network, similar to our cross-ministerial network in the central government. With the newly launched Tainan Open Government Platform, future discussions on urban development can be more openly discussed under a transparent program. However, even with those hard-won gains, we are facing new challenges. For example, the automated dissemination of misinformation has considerably impacted social trust. Rebuilding that trust with fact-based public dialogue, this is the focus of Taiwan's innovations in our democratic processes. In April last year, Reporters Without Borders set up its Asian headquarters in Taipei, and this is a concrete action to affirm the core values held by the Taiwanese society, freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Building on this, we must strive to find a response without affecting civil liberties, something that requires concerted efforts from all walks of life. Civil society is also actively contributing to the public discussion of public affairs through increasingly more and better initiatives and demonstrations. Our central and local governments, from cabinet ministers to the career public servants, are now adjusting our mentality and actively building channels for multi-stakeholder dialogues, seeking to co-create democratic processes that combines quality with accountability. This summit is a cherished opportunity for us to share our experiences and observations in diverse fields and diverse societies to brainstorm ideas and to work together to identify possible solutions. And finally, thank you for listening and I look forward to this event being a complete success.